Hello and welcome to part two of Let's Play Lady Sia. This is Pekopon TAS, and now we're going to be taking on the first quote unquote boss fight. In other words, the most worthless boss in the entire world. Glass, Glass Joe is like Mike Tyson compared to this guy. Because he sends out first he sends out his stupid mouse minions, and then let's see what happens. Okay, I kill three of his mouse minions by throwing them through a spaceship. And then there, I pick him up, and he's dead. Oh, that was so hard! Oh my god, I'm glad I... Oh, that was... I just barely made it through that one, folks. Sheesh. <sighs> and by the way, yes, I was fighting a pelican in a spaceship. Which, I guess it is kind of awesome. And some weird trivia about this is that in the tool assisted run I was making, this stage was a bitch because the on every single ROM I could find there was this weird glitch that the water caused where it would cause this line to go through the bottom of the screen and that would lag the game. So really that was one of the main reasons I stopped recording that run is because it was an, and it was it was like impossible for me to get an accurate uh, playthrough because it kept lagging. So until someone makes a proper ROM, I probably won't ever do that again. Also, my foot. Also, I lost uh, my run in a crash, in a computer crash. So that really discouraged me. So it's like with that and the crash combined, it was like, fuck this. I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah, one of the weird things about this game is there is there's not a lot there's not a lot of uh, sound effects. So it's a very quiet game, really. And, uh, the music isn't all that spectacular either, so, in a way, it's kind of bland, but what it lacks in music and, uh, sound effects, it makes up in nice, colorful art and, uh, nice animation. That was one of the things that was praised at the time, was, uh, how colorful and how good the animation was, because I don't show it, but the, uh, standstill animations, you know, like Sonic's tapping his foot or whatever, uh, Sia has a lot of those, and they're all really, they're all really, uh, well animated and they're all good they're all funny and eh, not so much funny but they're 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 good and but one of them really confuses the hell out of me as to what time frame this is because she whips out a cell phone and starts talking on her cell phone and is like okay is this set in the medieval ages or what uh they've got a freaking cell phone <laughs> and now we are fighting giant shark mon with a poseidon staff which I don't know if that's awesome or not, or if it's just stupid. And one of the few times you actually have to use the magic. Oh yeah. And she just stabbed herself in the back. Way to go, Sia. Oh wait, she was putting it in a stupid thing with Jake. And yes, I know. She was doing that. I was being silly. Do, do, do. Yeah, this is a stage with that one really bizarre glitch. And uh, I'll show it, well I'm not going to show it, but I'll quickly, okay that platform, and I pointed at the screen, that platform with the lava sticking out of it, if you step on that, it um, shoots you up into the spikes, but what happens is, if you activate a magic spell, right as, at like, the specific frame that you hit the spikes, so like it'll shoot you up, and when you hit the spikes, you activate a special magic spell, and that just completely fucks up the whole game. You're like walking in air, everything goes dark, and if you jump, you just jump off of the screen entirely and it just freezes and you have to start the game. You have to turn the system off, it's funny. It's really hard to do in real time, but it is possible, so it's not an emulator glitch. I've done it before. And it's time for the second boss, which, uh... Well, second boss of this world. Uh, this guy actually looks completely different on the box art and in all the uh, promotional material. He he had more of a spiky beard, like his beard stuck out to the sides, kind of like Star Fox's face now. And oh yes, for some reason the platform wouldn't let me stand on it, so I kept I kept dying. I think I died twice here because the platform was being an asshole, and not sure what was causing that. And yeah, as you might, you, as you might have noticed, I didn't get my health fully restored for the, when I died, and that's because uh, every time you get to a checkpoint, uh, it doesn't restore your health. So it's like you you gain a little bit of health, but when you restart at that checkpoint, like after you die, 
you keep whatever health you had at that point. So say you only had one health left when you got to a checkpoint, then you get you activate the checkpoint and then you have two health. So oh, stupid death. So uh, then you die and you get spawned at the checkpoint again and you start with two health. So it's really a crappy checkpoint system. And I'm not sure if that was on purpose or a glitch. Oh, and by the way, I tried it again and stupidly and I made it. But uh if that was on purpose, that was kind of a stupid move. <laughs> Though I can kind of see what they were going for, seeing as how you need to uh, have full health at the end of the stage to get the 100%. And by the way, that little platform with the lever, you can do a long jump to the next platform and skip this little bit, but it's incredibly hard to do. I've never done it on the actual system before, so... I've only done it on the uh, emulator, so I don't recommend you even try it because it's kind of pointless and not really worth it unless it's a speed run. And I skipped the mine cart because this is actually faster. Sure you get hit by the flames but who cares. Do, 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 do. Yeah this is one of the few places where the uh, fall through floors can come in handy. Just at that one little spot so you don't have to climb down the ladder. Ugh oh, stupid lightning zapping me in the face. Yeah, and uh, this little platform coming up, uh, yeah, I've never found a way to jump up to that platform from that platform. Like, even if I jump on the uh, lever, stand on that, and do all sorts of crazy jumps, I've never been able to get through there. And also, I didn't mention it in the uh, third level, but uh, there's this one jump across a river that you activate a crate to fall and you can use that as a platform. I've never, even on an emulator, been able to find a way to long jump over that. I can come incredibly close, but I've never been able to do it, so honestly I don't think it's possible. And a really easy glitch you can pull off at this fight, but if it it uh freeze it uh screws up your game and you have to turn it off, is uh when you start this fight, hold left, right, up or down after the uh, text. So it's like you hold up, or left, or right, or down, push start, and then you'll just fly in that direction and go off screen, and you'll have to start the... you'll have to turn off the system again. So yeah, it's, it's such a fucking buggy, buggy game. But that, that's, that, that was actually one of the funnest parts of this game for me, was just finding all the glitches, because it's surprisingly fun to find glitches in games. Uh, that, that's what a lot of my videos were at first on my, on my channel, was just a bunch of weird glitches and stuff. And uh, they're really fun to find, so you should you should try it out. I mean, eventually, I got to the point where I figured out what sort of stuff would cause glitches, and at that point, I was just finding stuff all like all the time, and it was really fun because once you get good at seeing the sort of flaws that they would make, you can really find stuff quite frequently, or at least in a buggy game like this. I, I, I don't know how rushed the development was for this or anything. It looks like a fair amount of time was put into it, because it's a good game. But once you start digging around trying to find glitches, it's you really realize just how uh, messed up it is. Because, yeah, it's... Overall, it, it, it's like the original Pokemon, if... Although, yeah, it's like... It's like the original Pokemon. If, if you just play it normally, you won't find very much wrong with it. But when you really dig into it, it's a really poorly made game. God, the original Pokemon's just a mess. Oh, and I missed the platform. Yeah, and this is one of the only stages where the fall through floors glitch really comes in handy. Uh, yeah, with this part, if you get hit by those spikes there, you can fall through that whole area. And you can skip a big chunk of this uh, walking around. And it, it, it's a good glitch. It's a really good shortcut. So, uh, yeah, if you're ever, if you're ever gonna try a tool-assisted run, make sure you use that shortcut, because it's a really good one. Oh, and this stupid penguin caused so much hell when I was trying to get a perfect run, because he always hits you with a snowball. It's so hard to kill that guy without getting hit. So, it, that was a pain of a level to get perfect. Oh, pausing. And this boss I fucking hate, because first of all, it took me forever to figure out how to kill him, because... I didn't know that you could do this ground pound thing. I had to look up on uh, the internet the controls to this game so I could uh, figure out that I could do that. Because the first time I, the first bunch of times I played, I just kept pushing him to the side, thinking that was hurting him. It wasn't doing shit, and I didn't know. So yeah, I kept dying and whatever. 
Oh, and I, I'm not pushing him to the side. And I'm just taking the hit because it's faster to do that. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's a lot faster to do that. And if you do this right, you can do it really quickly. And it doesn't matter. But what sucks about this stupid fight is that you have to get the walrus to charge at you once the ground is almost completely broken. And for some reason, he just doesn't want to do it. And it's really weird just how... It's completely random if he does it or not. And uh, you have to keep trying to jump far enough to get him to charge at you. But if you uh, break the floor yourself, it doesn't matter if you make it back to the side, you're going to fall down. So it's really a cheap boss. And it's really annoying because uh, you just keep dying and you have to get completely lucky if he'll charge at you or not. And I'm dead. And game over. So, well, we'll end it here. So, see you next time. Stay tuned for part three. Buy the Blue Beetle comics.